What's up guys, this is Chris here, and today I just wanted to cover a question that I've got. Should I get a Brett M9? Or is a Brett M9 right for you? So I figured I would just specify what the pros and cons of one of the most popular pistols in the market is, and help you decide if maybe this particular model is right for you. Before we get into the video, I want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys I can purchase guns like this. I bought this gun with a Patreon dollar, so thank you very much. If you want to support the channel, that's the best way to do it. Just go to the link in the description and sign up. Also in the description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. The YSS, I try to support it in every video. If you please go down there and click that link. It'd mean a lot to me, and you'd be doing a good thing. So first, let's go over what the Beretta M9 is, and then we'll kind of talk about the uses of handguns traditionally, and then see if maybe this gun fits the role that you're interested in. The Beretta M9 is a double single action pistol, which makes it different than most of the popular guns on the market today, like Glock and M&P and stuff. So you're gonna have two different trigger pulls. However, this action was really, really popular uh, a couple of decades ago. The Beretta M9 is one of the first and one of the best Wonder 9s, originally before double stack pistols existed. The standard was single stack. Now the double stack 15 round magazine is standard. However, this is one of the first pistols to be popularized that particular magazine and then now we have a double single action design here so instead of having the hammer cocked all the time you can you keep it in double action have a long trigger pull here and then the action will cycle and then you will have a short crisp single action so your first shot will be double action, your remaining 14 or 15 shots will be uh, single action. Now, you can actually cock and lock the gun as well and fire the first round in single action. However, if a manual safety or a decocker up here, depending on which one you get, I think it's the F or the G model. The G model is the one with the decocker only. So this gun here, if you decock the gun, it will just pop right back. And that's the G model as opposed to the regular model where if you flip the safety down, it will decock the gun and it will stay on safe until you flip it back up. That was a point of controversy on the M9s for a long time because you can inadvertently swip that on and put it on safe and all of a sudden your gun doesn't work when you want it to after you've racked the slide. I've actually seen multiple people do this in real life so it is a problem. However, they did change the design of the safety in the more modern guns to where it's swept up so it's much harder to do. Now, it, the Brett M9 has a full five inch barrel. It's a full size gun coming in around 32 ounces with an aluminum frame. This gun in front of you here is an M9A4, which is the latest and greatest of the M9. You have to understand the M9 has been popular since the 80s, you know, going up predominantly against the SIG 226 for the military contract, and this would then become the US military sidearm for about 40 years or so. So you gotta understand that the Brett M9 is a very vetted and very proven design. Uh, it is a full size gun, that's one thing to keep in mind. It is a full five inch, however, they make shorter versions of the M9 for carry, but also understand that no matter what version you get, it's gonna be relatively large. 32 ounces, full five inch barrel there, it gives you good velocity. However, it does take up a lot of space when you're trying to carry it, and it is a little bit heavier than your standard polymer frame. We have uh, front and rear slide cuts on this M9A4, which is the most current version of the Beretta M9. Uh, we also have an open top design on the Beretta, which is different than a lot of pistols, and it runs a different action than the Browning tilting action action as well. Uh, so you can see here there's pros and cons to that. The gun feeds directly into the barrel which uh, supposedly helps with feeding. However, you do have an open top here so you can burn your hand and you can get dirt and debris in there a little bit easier. The most recent M9A4 here actually has an optics mounting system which is nice but these guns traditionally don't mount optics quite as well as more modern guns. Now, they do have more modern features these days with a rail on the bottom, which is important for lights and lasers if you're interested in a gun for home defense. The double stack magazine of nine millimeter, uh, 16 and 17 round magazines are more than enough capacity for home defense, concealed carry, or any other purpose you would use a handgun for, even competition, that's more than enough. So the capacity and reliability and accuracy for this gun are all on point. Not only does this have a good military track record, but it has a really good track record in police service and in civilian use as well. Very proven design, very reliable, good capacity. The only real cons to this are going to be that it's a little bit heavier than modern day pistols and the action can take uh, a little bit longer to learn. But once you do, believe me, you can run it as good or even better than a lot of the most popular striker fired guns. 
What I would consider this gun for primarily would be for home defense or duty use, law enforcement, military, or home defense. However, this is light enough theoretically to carry all day if you're a bigger guy, especially. Uh, however, it is a large handgun, make no mistake. Not only is it a large handgun, but it also has a battery of arms that is a little bit, I guess I don't want to use the word dated, but it is an older design by comparison to modern striker fire guns. So it is a, again, an action that you're going to require some training with, but I think you'd be very happy with it if you do. I love the double action trigger design for a Pennings carry, and I think that's one of the reasons why the Beretta is carried an awful lot, is because it is one of the most reputable and most popular double single action designs, and if you're going to carry a Pendix, that long first trigger pull does make you feel better when that thing is dangling around your junk. So. I think if you're going to appendix carry, a Beretta M9 model is a great choice. I also think if you want a handgun for self-defense, home defense, uh, an all-around gun that you can go out and plink with, have a good time with, and then also maybe shoot a competition with, the Beretta M9 is also a phenomenal choice. Part of that is due to its wealth of experience. Uh, it has so many aftermarket parts. So you can get magazines, you can get holsters, you can get all types of accessories, including uh, dots and all kinds of fun stuff if you want to, and it will not only work, but work very well. Finally, it's also a pretty phenomenal suppressor host if you're interested in that, because I often suppress not only this one, but my M9A3, and uh, they work great. They No need to change a recoil spring or anything like that. They just run 147 grain like a top, and I'm very happy with mine, especially suppress. Is that a suppressor there, or are you just happy to see me? Both. So if you're looking for a great home defense gun, plinking gun, or if you just want to have a gun that hangs on the wall, that's another thing I wanted to mention about the Beretta M9 is that it is extremely beautiful. As far as designs go, popular designs, it's right up there toward the top. You could argue it in the 1911 uh, as far as semi-automatic guns. They have just a classic silhouette, and on top of that, they have the Italian curves, man. I got to tell you, it's one of the most beautiful guns. It's one of the most reliable guns. It's one of the most durable guns, and that's why even still today, it is is one of the most popular choices for self-defense. Now, concealed carry, I think it's gonna be a little bit big for most people. It's not super heavy at 32 ounces. You gotta understand it's only five ounces or so heavier than a Glock, full-size Glock, but the size of the grip and now with the more modern guns, you can have the G10 inlay grips that actually lay flat, so it's a little bit uh, smaller, but it's gonna be awfully big to carry, and this might actually not be a good gun for smaller statured people as well. Not that it, again, is heavy or has a lot of recoil, because it actually has less recoil than most striker fired guns because it is a little bit heavier, but because the grip itself is large and the trigger can be difficult to reach, uh, sometimes this gun is a little bit uh, too big for uh, smaller statured people, smaller hands, that kind of thing. However, for most people, I think you're going to be extremely happy with it. Along with the just overall ability to perform, it comes with uh, a history of military success and obviously been used in tons of pop culture uh, from anywhere from Lethal Weapon on and on it goes. All the all the Jean Claude Van Damme movies I can think of. <laughs> uh, every movie where there's a cop or a military personnel of some type in the last 40 years, there's a good chance the Beretta has been in that movie. Obviously made most famous by die hard, but this gun is popular, good looking, reliable, durable, accurate, and I think other than maybe concealed carry, if you are interested in this gun, I think it's probably for you. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, please help out your local homeless shelters, and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Imagine if John McClane had this. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker.